Doctors and nurses of Reddit, what's the worst thing y'all've seen on the job? Nursing student here, had to insert a catheter into a pretty obese lady, saw a black string hanging from her glory hole. I asked her if she had a tampon in and she said oh, I hope it's not still there. I ended up having to pull it out and the stench will be with me forever. Not to mention the white pus and brown slime covering a now black tampon. Apparently she hadn't had a period in months, so who knows how long it was in there. My glory hole just went further into my body out of pure horror. When I was doing my OB gin rotation, we had a woman come into clinic that had a condom in her glory hole. Apparently it came off during the act with her boyfriend, but they didn't take it out, and she waited like 2 weeks to come in to get a doctor to remove it. She stunk the entire office up so badly. Jesus no. Most disturbing thing I can remember in recent history was someone with sister psychosis, tapeworm infection of the brain. I got a script for a duel with a ridiculously high dose. I called the doctor thinking it was a mistake and he told me what was up. We both agreed there was very little chance of it working, but he said there were absolutely no other alternatives. Now I have a headache, and I cannot convince myself it's not the brain worms. A homeless paraplegic woman was brought into the earth for pneumonia. We had to strip off all of her dirty clothes and put her in a hospital gown. As I took her pants off, I noticed a cockroach, which I thought was weird. As we took her panties off, out came the swarm. Roaches had nested in her tea and she couldn't feel it because of the paralysis. We have a winner. Worked on a rural EMT team during summers off from college and responded to a drunk driving accident. When we arrived, I thought clearly this guy has to be dead, mostly due to the crumpled car that the firefighters had cut apart. This guy must have been drinking a lot, because there were beer bottles all over the place, with broken glass shards all lodged in his skin. But that wasn't the worst part. He had the remnants of a beer bottle lodged in his neck, which in and of itself wasn't too bad. I've seen worse. Except the bottle was the only thing keeping his head attached to this body. The man had decapitated himself. I'll never forget seeing his eyes moving and mouth attempting to speak. Or the sick sucking sound that were emanating from his neck as he struggled to breathe. But obviously, he did not survive the night. I've been an RN for over 5 years. The story that sticks out in my mind is this elderly woman who had colon cancer. I was newly pregnant. Very very bad morning sickness all day long. She was on the verge of death and started vomiting the contents of her bowels. When the bowels stop working the stuff can come up out of the mouth. We had to get a tube down her nose ASAP to start sucking the stuff out so she could no longer puke it and die in peace. Those are hard moments. Watching someone dying and you are almost physically unable to help them. And usually I pride myself on being able to handle the most disgusting of situations. Someone had to come in and help me. Thank goodness. And we got the tube down her nose. Sounds like an argument for quietly increasing the level of morphine under the approval of family. My mom worked for a urologist. She came home with a story of this guy that had a master lock attached through his dong. He misplaced the key and was looking to get it off. He also rode his bike to the office. They had to refer him to the hospital to remove the lock. My mother told me after a night working there. A guy came in with his dong broke sideways. He said my girlfriend got a little too excited. Another one where my dad was driving an ambulance. It was time to remove a cast for a very large woman who broke her leg. He was sent to pick her up. She never got up from her chair since getting out of the hospital. For months she crap and pee herself in her recliner. My mother is the one who removed the cast. The cast was full of cockroaches and roach eggs. They said the ambulance and the exam room smelled for days. Student psychiatric nurse here. While on a ward for the elderly suffering from dementia I had one experience I will never forget. I was helping a client eat. When I get a call from one of the rooms in the corridor. The client I was helping was pretty much done so I went to investigate. Hoping that it wasn't a fall as the call was from a room belonging to a very unsteady lady. Oh god. How I wish it were a fall. The lady who called. Let's call her Betty. Was in the corridor outside her room. The first thing I noticed were her hands, covered in feces. Oh Betty, did you have some trouble in the bathroom hey? It happens, sometimes when you're older you may be a bit shaky or confused, and I'm not one to judge the unwell, 
let's get you washed up then. We move into her bedroom when the smell hits me. For a second I just stare and try to take in what has happened. What follows is my brain process. Traces of feces are everywhere. On the walls. On the wardrobe. On her clean clothes. On her bed. On the door. That's okay. We can clean this. But I can't see any major. Uh, movement. From which it would have come from. But wait. There's something on the floor. As if someone had defecated on the floor and. Picked it up. Yes. There's slide marks from someone obviously mov. Oh my god. She has shat on her dinner plate. I saw. On her bedside table. A plate piled high with feces. I'm not kidding. At least 6 inches. On top of the food. And I just stood there. And stared for what felt like an eternity. More like 5 seconds I guess. Before calling someone to give me a hand. Perhaps it was a political statement about the state of the food in the hospital. I don't know. Regardless. I now have the best party dinner table story. Obviously not a real name. Not a technical term. TLDR. Older lady defecates on floor. Picks it up and puts it on top of her dinner plate. Not mine. But my sister. She was working at an old folks center near our house. And she was with this one older gentleman. On his hip. Was a black head the size of a dime. On top of a decent sized lump. About 2 inches long. An inch wide and half an inch tall. So she threw on some gloves. And squeezed the black head. With the permission of the man of course. Out popped this roll of gauze that was left over from his hip surgery 10 years prior that he never bothered to get removed. Apparently the smell was horrid and she will never forget it. I found a nursing forum once that had a huge thread of worst things stories. The one that stuck in my mind the most was a patient who was recovering from a colostomy operation and went into cardiac arrest. As they were doing chest compressions, semi-liquid crap was spurting from the brand new colostomy hole. Here's a story from my cousin, who's in med school currently. There was a PCP who went to some part of Africa. I don't remember where specifically, sorry, for the Peace Corps. When he came back, he found he was always more tired than he was when he left for Africa. One day he felt a pulsation in his eye and went to the air. Once there, the doctor found a small worm wriggling around in his eye. The worm normally lives near the brain, but had somehow made its way out from there and into his eye. The a doctor hadn't seen anything like it and called in another doctor to come and look at it. By the time the other doctor got there, the worm had made its way back out of the eye. Cut to about a month later and the PCP feels the pulsation again. But instead of returning to the hospital, he decided to take care of it himself. He takes a needle and heats it up using the stove. He then puts it into his own eye in order to remove the parasite. Over the course of the next year or two, he removes, if I remember correctly, around 5 of the worms this way before feeling better. I'm a pediatric nurse. The worst stuff I see relates to abuse. Two weeks ago I treated a baby who had been beaten so severely that his skull bones kept shifting under my hands when I assessed him and assisted in putting a collar on him. A few months before that I saw 3 month old girl with a torn tee from being a victim of debauchery by her 15 year old cousin. But then yesterday I took care of a really cute 4 year old who hugged me for making him feel better. He violated, or 3 month old girl. I want to be angered, but I can't help but wonder how the frick he even got it in there without killing her. Not a doctor or a nurse, combat medic in the army. This is a story a PA told me. A girl came into the clinic complaining of glory hole pain. And when he went to examine her he found she was having thick grey oozing tea discharge. He tried to prescribe her medication for it, but she refused to take it. Why? Because her boyfriend liked the taste. My dad is a doctor in the intensive care unit. One day he had a lady who was crossing the street when a coach bus ran her over. She was dragged for two blocks before someone stopped the bus. She came into the hospital missing like 80% of her skin and was disemboweled but conscious for the whole thing. Eh? Girlfriend a nurse. Early one morning a man came in with a broken off plunger up his butt. He was sodomizing himself when it somehow broke off. Splintered his finger and lodged itself deep within his rectal cavity. Needless to say it was quite gross to remove and looked incredibly painful. Dude, I just clenched. A woman came in with complaints of abdominal pain. 
screaming about how her baby was dead. Her record showed absolutely nothing about get being pregnant. After having her change into a gown, the most ungodly stench filled the room. My doc began a pelvic exam, with me as a standby. I will never forget his face as he removed a pinkish brown clotted mass. A chicken leg. Turns out her baby was an uncooked chicken she chopped up and inserted into her tea. Her baby might not have been dead, but that chicken sure was. I can't believe I'm still reading this far down. I thought I could stop but knew you. Mine is not a story of genitalia nor hilarious STDs. I'll warn you now. Both my parents are doctors. They were working on the 11th of September 2001 at military hospitals in DC. When the planes hit the supposedly less populated half of the Pentagon there were hordes of burn victims. I was relatively young at the time but their faces when they came home is something I won't soon forget. They told me about a burn patient who was literally covered in third degree burns across his body. From behind the ears to his tear ducts all the way down to the soles of his foot. From what they recounted he was absolutely silent when they brought him in despite in essence having the raw meat of his body exposed to air. Something that should be excruciating. Skin. It turns out. Is the biggest defense the body has against infection. Within 24 hours his body was covered in massive black bleeds and infected sores. He still didn't say anything. Not even a moan. Or so I'm told. Until he died. TL. DR. Sometimes it is worse to live through a terrorist attack. It was probably an acute stress reaction. Layman's shock. Not circulatory shock. In other words. He was probably in so much pain his mind went into defense mode and just tuned out. My roommate is a nurse and there is a homeless guy that comes to her regularly. Apparently this guy had a major surgery in the last 10 years where they removed something from his stomach. Or that general area. After the surgery he woke up and just left the hospital without letting himself healing. He proceeded to do drugs such as M and his body was never able to heal properly. Apparently he comes to the ER. About once every week to rebandage his intestines. The nurses have to rinse and sanitize the intestines and rebandage him up every time he comes in. They simply take a large bandage and wrap it around his midsection. He has been seen outside the hospital holding his intestines with a plastic bag pressed to his stomach while smoking cigarettes. That man gives a spectacular lack of freaks. My wife worked at an in Dallas. TX for a while. While she has many stories of mutilated bodies, burn victims and gunshot wounds, the one that got me was this one. A kid, about 13, and his mom come into the air. The mom had dragged the kid in because he was complaining of real bad digestive problems. The kid had convinced her he was fine, until he couldn't hide the bleeding coming from his shit shoot. They take him in for x-rays and see, clear as day, a 14 inches black rubber dong. Like in that movie, they didn't know it was black then, found out later, obviously. This thing had wedged itself up far, most likely due to his efforts to remove it, was pushing on the walls of his intestine and had 3 days worth of crap piled on top of it. They take him into a private room and ask if there is anything he wants to tell them before they discuss specifics with his mother. It's going to need to be removed surgically. He tells them no, he just felt sick. They tell them they had found an object lodged in his lower intestine. His response, oh, I may have sat on a marker. Poor kid, just experimenting with that orientation. With a black, 14 inches rubber dong. Um, call me naive, but I can't imagine a 13 year old managing to get 14 inches up his butt by himself. There's more to this story. Worked as a porter supply technician. Besides the abortion clinic days where I had to transport the medical waste, I would say that the worst thing I ever saw on the job was the aftermath of someone who walked into the main entrance and shot themselves in the face. We didn't have an active emergency room, so he had to be taken in an ambulance to the next closest hospital. Live through it all. I'm a pill runner at a hospital on Long Island. I've seen gunshot victims, stabbings, car accidents, etc. But these gruesome injuries aren't the worst I've seen. A young guy overdosed and was in IQ with a coma for a week. Throughout that week it seemed like hundreds of people came to visit the kid. It was extremely sad seeing how many people cared for him and how much he was loved. A friend of mine worked in a psych ward. On a night shift, a guy jumped from the second floor. Not sure how he got out. I never asked. The nurses ran out. 
and was surprised to find him standing on the lawn outside. He was screaming his throat out, but was still standing upright for some reason. As they got closer, they realized why. He'd snapped both his legs straight off in the fall, causing his splintered shins to impale the soil like a couple of organic javelins. My friend still shudders when referring to the blood, the creaking of the bones, and the screaming. An ex of mine is a physician. His holy freaking crap you'll never guess what I saw today stories always involved fat people and poor hygiene. Like, cheesy infected smelly folds often harboring remnants of snacks and the like. Also, he was present at a birth once that involved a stillborn. Comma he said that was pretty horrific emotionally and physically. Probably not the same approach, but my cousin is a police officer and during his wife's first pregnancy she was expecting twins. They went on a camping trip and she had a miscarriage, losing both of them while on the portaloo. It was quite the horror of personal imagination when I was told he had to crawl down into the hole and retrieve his two unborn babies. Fly eggs and leg wounds. People having caked on crap and eggs from laying in their own filth. Fly eggs in catheter bags. A foot so infected that the sock was welded to it with goop. An infected toe that I could pull the nail off and the patient wouldn't feel it. Maggots in wounds. Gotta go eat now. Love being a nurse. My mom used to be a nurse at a children's hospital in Pittsburgh. The worst I can remember her telling me was there was a little boy born without eyeballs. Other than that it would be the families that would bring their kids in and not even visit until it was time to take them home. Wife is a nurse. Back when she was working at another hospital she had been taking care of a rheum addict. This person looks like your typical user off Breaking Bad. Anyways she tells me that this one time someone came to visit her and while the visitor was in there one of the other nurses saw the visitor putting something in light fixture. The other nurse thought it was strange and went to go see what it was, thinking it was probably more drugs or something. Anyways what she pulls out has got to be the most disgusting thing I can think of. She takes it out and shows it to my wife. My wife immediately knows what it is and tells her she needs to get rid of it and wash her hands right now. What was it? Well the person visiting was also a M addict and had pulled off some of their scabs, which for those unfamiliar can contain M, and placed them in light fixture for the patient to eat later so they could get high. Oh. My. God. Don't do M. Kids. Was at a Hans Rosling lecture once when he talked about his time as a doctor in Mozambique. To illustrate how rudimental the healthcare was he retold a story of a pregnant woman who had been in delivery for 48 hours, risking to die. The baby had one arm prolapsed, apparently cut off from the rest of the circulation it had started to miscolor from necrosis, and was effectively stuck. Emergency caesarean was not an option where he was at. Rosling couldn't say for sure that the baby was dead. He thought he might have heard faint heart sounds. But he knew it was going to die either way, and so was the mother if he didn't do something. After discussing with the pregnant woman's mother Hans commenced cutting up the baby from inside. Apparently not an uncommon procedure if the baby is dead and you don't have access to the equipment required to perform a caesarean. And pulled the parts out. Apparently the woman survived. Yeah, that is pro-level medical birth horror. My GF worked as an EMT for a bit. She had a case when she was in training where a guy took some kind of psychoactive drug and thought his fingers were trying to attack him. So he shot them off one by one with a handgun. It was just a bloody, pulpy stump left on his left hand. He obviously had to stop when he wanted to shoot off the fingers on his trigger hand. My friend's teacher used to work as a receptionist, and he said his worst drug related story was this time a guy, who was obviously tripping on something, came strolling in, holding his severed genitals in his hand. He plopped them down on the desk and said I don't think I was supposed to do that. Not me but my mom. EMT got called to the scene of a bicyclist that got hit by a bus. Upon arrival they found him dead at the scene and decapitated. They searched for his head, but couldn't find it anywhere. After about 30 minutes or so they take the body to the hospital and x-ray it. They found the head. It had been pushed straight into his chest cavity and was sitting where his lungs and heart were. Story from a friend. Unstrapped baby in the back of the car. Thrown forward onto the manual gear shift that was missing its knob. Baby's head speared between the two frontal lobes. Upon arrival at a 
The Adox requisition said friend and others from maintenance who cut the gear shift out of the car to enable the Dox to bring baby in for surgery. Friend was told months later that the baby appears on track to make a full recovery. Working in a stroke unit as a male nurse. Worst thing I've seen, or rather what's unnerving me most, the families visiting. Couldn't imagine being in their position. This isn't my story, but it was told to me by a nurse. So, a pregnant M addict comes into the hospital, complaining that she can't feel her baby moving. They lay her down, and when the, the skirt is lifted to look inside, her airway was filled with maggots. Apparently, she had a miscarriage without noticing, and the maggots were feeding on what was still caught inside of her. The image is burned into my brain. This is the kind of story they should tell teens when they are at those don't do drugs assemblies. Me running an emergency clinic in India. We had around 40 visits an hour with around half of them admissions. There was no facility in neighboring districts. Seen so much that I am numb. This one comes to mind first. Multiple stab wounds on a man with throat cut till the bone is exposed. Yes he was dead within minutes. Respiratory therapist in level 1 trauma center here. Once we had a man come in with an open leg fracture. Like little bone. Femur. Pointing up and rest of leg meat hanging off and partially resting on bed. He had been in a motorcycle accident with his wife. Riding on the back. Who actually died. The worst part being that he was wearing one of those biker shirts that read. If you can read this. The bee fell off. Pretty horrible stuff. I heard this story from one of the nurses at the hospital I volunteer for. Apparently, this lady comes in complaining about a huge pain in her tea. The doctor checks and he begins observing when he notices something strange and bulbous. Eventually, he pulls it out and it's a huge potato and the lady exclaims, Oh, wow, I forgot that was even in there. It turned out that she had a fever or something a few weeks before and in her culture, she believed that sticking potatoes up there cured the problem. I worked as an EMT for a few months. We were called out to a house by a family who said that their dad won't get out of bed or take his meds until he was becoming increasingly violent and ill. So we go out there. As soon as I opened the door I'm punched in the face with a stench that could freaking peel paint. I have a strong stomach and I could barely stand it. I mean it just put a lump in your throat. So we find this guy lying in bed. Naked. Covered head to toe in pee crap blood and vomit. No joke. His hair was matted with fesses and dried flood. Did I mention he had hep C? So we try to convince the guy to leave because he needs to go to the hospital. He refuses and proceeds to pick up a razor off the table thanks to him and start trying to cut me in the other EMTs. He spit on my shirt. We call the cops. They tell him to go with us. He refuses. He gets tased. They tase the frick out of this dude. Apparently he was using M and would not go down easy. So they tased the crap out of him. Eventually got him onto the truck, and pumped him with a quad dose of Valoem. Best part was, I got to pull the taser barbs out. If y'all've never seen one up close, they look like a eagle claw fish hook the kind that hook backwards and don't come out. Only they have a dozen hooks on them. So this thing is buried one stroke two in this dude's side. I try to proceed as gingerly as possible, it ain't happening. The EMTP says just yank it, so I did. It sounded like I was tearing a heavy towel in half. That was the worst crap I have ever done. Comma it sounded like I was tearing a heavy towel in half. Frick. I'm an EMT. And some of the worst things I've seen are the atrocities committed at nursing homes. Just as an example. We picked up a guy last week to take to the hospital who had chewed down to the first knuckle on his index finger. When I asked why he had done this. He replied. So I could get out of this place. I truly believe that nursing homes are the worst places to send the elderly. Care for your parents when they get older. Don't send them to these crap holes. Nursing homes aren't all bad. I've worked at one for 10 years and we take very good care of our residents and get excellent reviews by family members. Just wanted to make sure you didn't throw them all under the bus with your blanket statement. Happy holidays. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.